Oh, how, how love I thy law. It's my meditation all the day. Thought through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I haven't departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Mem will be forty in the Hebrew gematria. The word means water. It's a thirteen letter in the Hebrew alphabet, corresponding to our thirteen letter. This is the number of repression and the number of rebellion, falling on the same letter in both alphabets. Verse 97 would be Christ or David's or the blessed man of Psalm 1. Verses 98, 99 and 100 are terrors for Christian educators. When a man does the following things, he will gain wisdom which is not recorded in the Shastas, Puranas, Sutras, Tripitaka, Rosicrucian literature, Praina and Samadhi experiences, the, the Book of the Deed, the works of the Tibetan monks, the Harvard five-foot selves of, of classics, the Quran, the Analex and the commentaries by Lange, Clark, Henry, Jamieson, Fawcett, Brown, Bullinger, Ellicott, Dumelow, the Biblical Evangelist, the Biblical Viewpoint, the Word of the Lord, Pulpit Helps, or the Biblioteca Sacra and the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. He will make decisions according to the commandments of God. Meditate on the things that God has recorded. Keep the precepts that are recorded. Refrain his feet from every evil way. Allow God to teach him. Verse 102. How is that for a starter? Our enemies are ever with us, for we are on foreign territory, where the enemy multiplies every decade. There are more unsaved people on earth today than there were, there were in 1900, and there were more on earth then than were in 1800. Apostasy is progressive, real evolution. Nothing can progress like degeneration and deterioration. You cannot outsmart the unsaved doctors, lawyers, educators, Catholic priests, world leaders, politicians, philosophers, humanists, and other assorted degenerates without the commandments of God. You are in an army, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, that has a captain, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, and you have been given the title of a soldier, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, whether it fits you or not. Verse 103. How sweet are thy words, like commandments, testimonies, precepts, thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth. O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Nun will stand for fifty and it means a fish. Verse 105 is crucial. The word he is talking about is composed of works, words, words which he can eat. We have already learned that a Bible believer who puts the book into practice is wiser than all his enemies, in better intellectual condition than his Hebrew and Greek professors, wiser than the men who wrote the sutra 
sutras, sastas and vedas. Now the word of God is likened to a light and a lamp. In the Bible it's likened to a sword, a hammer, a coat, a nail, an apple, a loaf of bread, meat, milk, water, fire and honey. The lamp is in the home to read by or carry from room to room when needed. There are kerosene lamps, butan lamps, gas lamps, electric lamps and Coleman lamps. The light is like sunlight or moonlight outside where a man is walking, a light under thy path. The similitudes are chosen perfectly and are manifold in application. The book is a reading lamp. It's the best reading in the world and the source of all the really good literature in the world. Every plot used on TV and radio and internet, every fictional story found in every magazine and book on this earth, has a seed plot, which is stated in the Bible. The book is a heating lamp, like the kind you find in saunas and spas. It can warm your soul and the souls of your congregation. The book is a safety lamp, like a small light in the back hallway. It can keep you from stumbling when you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. It's like a flashlight or some safety matches that you need in an emergency. The book is a traveler's lamp. It's at the in intersection to show you when to go, when to stop and when to slow down. It illuminates the overpasses and causeways and warns of approaching trains and trucks. It shines as a beacon on airport runways, so you will land safely. And as a lighthouse, it can keep you from shipwreck. See 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19 on the rocks. The book is a night lamp. It's, it's good when the sun goes down. It stands on the lampstand by the bed of the dying, like Whitefield's candle stood by him in Boston and burn it down to the wick as he breathed his last breath. No Bible, no book, no lamp, no light. Verse 106 is self-examinatory and probably messianic. Verse 107 is like verses 67 and 61. Verse 108 is Old Testament in context, context and is defined in Leviticus chapter 22 verse 18. Mention will be found in Numbers chapter 15 verse 3 and chapter 29 verse 39. See Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 17 and chapter 16 verse 10. The mouth is involved because a woe is involved. Verse 109. His life is in a precarious position and he can be killed at any moment. See Job chapter 13 verse, verse 14. Verse 110 is messianic and matches verses 61 and 85. Verse 111 is clear. See also verses 72, 127 and 162. Verse 112 is self-exclamatory. It's a firm resolve to do right no matter what. In a tribulation context it's Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my seal, I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect under thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross, therefore I, I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembled for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Some extends for sixty and means a prop or support. Verse 13 13 is clear. The saints have to be good haters. 
and a man who cannot hate evil and vain thoughts is not a dedicated man. The modern neutricide educator must love everything and everybody except someone who hates something. Alexandrians always have double standards. So this modern toleration and coexisting, loving, coping and sharing definitely has its limits. These socialistic do-gooders will not tolerate anyone who differs with them on the origins of mankind or the future of mankind. Verse 114 is self-explanatory. Verse 115 is Davidic or Messianic. See Psalm 101 verse 7. In the case of Jesus Christ, if the commandments of God are kept, then evildoers will have to be banished or killed. Verse 119. Verse 117 is clear. No man is safe unless God holds him up and God uses his word to do this. Verse 116. Verses 118 and 119 are fulfilled literally at the end of Daniel's 70th week. They are literally trodden down in spite of the commentators' desire to get along with their fellow man by toning down Psalm chapter 68, verse 23. Which see, their deceit was falsehood in its purest form, the son of perdition, Satan, personified as the, li as the lie incarnate. See John chapter 8, verse 44. Verse 120 is clear. It's the proper response when a man feeds, feasts on the word of God, according to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 2. And this explains why God never reveals anything to the destructive, destructive critics who use the Bible to make a living while inwardly despising it.